Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Indeed, the Lord is near. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you've been to Mass in the last couple of weeks, uh, you might have noticed the Advent wreath that is right next to me. Uh, and it's four different candles. Each candle, it represents one of the four Sundays of Advent, which is why uh, we light a different one each Sunday. And so each Sunday, another candle is lit. Today's candle, however, is the one that stands out because it's a different color than the rest of them. Instead of the usual Advent violet, we get a pink or a, a rose candle. You might have wondered, well, wh why the rose candle? Well, the rose candle and all the rose-colored vestments which we use for the Mass is a visual representation that this Sunday is different than the rest of the Sundays of Advent. As we've heard uh, over the last two Sundays, Advent is a season of preparation and repentance for the coming of Christ, both his second coming and our celebration of his first. So Advent is characteristically kind of a, a more somber uh, penitential season. You might even pick up, or you may have even picked up on the imagery uh, in our readings using uh, imagery of darkness and deserts. But as we get past the middle of Advent, uh, we enter into our third week. And we turn our focus ever so briefly. We kind of pause and do this little uh, pre-celebration where we turn our focus from repentance to joy. Realizing that Christmas is drawing ever nearer. So this Sunday is traditionally known as Gaudetta Sunday or Joy Sunday. The name comes from the traditional entrance antiphon, which would be sung uh, during the procession in. Uh, and it would begin with this word, Gaudetta, which means rejoice. The full antiphon, it comes from Philippians and it goes like this. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Indeed, the Lord is near. In our liturgical colors, this is represented by taking this usual color of, uh, of violet in Advent and mixing it with the white of Christmas, giving us this beautiful rose color. So today's color looks forward with joy and anticipation, but it's still tinged with a hint of violet, reminding us that we're not quite there yet. It's kind of like being a kid uh, a few days before your birthday party. You've been waiting all year for this day, and friends and family are coming. They're about to come celebrate you. But your mom has made you help clean for the big party. So even though you're excited, you've been occupied with all the busyness of preparation. But now, taking a break from the cleaning, you look over and you see a stack of boxes wrapped with wrapping paper, and it sinks in. My birthday party's coming soon. And you feel a, a pang of excitement mixed with anticipation. It's not there yet, but it's getting closer and closer. And this is kind of what we feel on the third Sunday of Advent. Christmas is not here yet, but it's getting closer. In our first reading for this Sunday, we hear yet again from the prophet Isaiah. So far, we've heard a magnificent prophecy of great peace, uh, the beating of swords down into plowshares. We've heard of uh, the coming of the shoot of Jesse, the Messiah who will come and make all things right. Today, however, Isaiah focuses our attention on the joy that is to come using the imagery of a desert coming into bloom. Now, living in Southern California, we live very close to a desert. Deserts are very dry and barren places. And if you drive long enough east, you will eventually hit miles and miles of sand dunes where there's scarcely a hint of any life or vegetation. But one of the most remarkable things about deserts is when they bloom. Every year, uh, and every spring in fact, 
thousands of people flock over to Joshua Tree National Park, which is just about an hour from here, because conditions are right once a year for wildflowers to make an appearance. For just a few weeks of the year, the dry desert landscape is suddenly adorned with color. Thousands and thousands of flowers scattered amidst, amidst the rocks and desert trees and cacti. The flowers don't last very long. After a few weeks, they'll wilt away from the summer heat. But for those few weeks, the desert becomes a truly magical and enchanting place, uncharacteristically full of color. This is, not, or this is what Isaiah compares to the coming of our Lord. His coming will bring great joy, so much so that not only will we rejoice, but the very desert will burst into bloom. Nature itself cries out in joy at Jesus' arrival, and this joy is contagious. Isaiah tells us to look to our neighbor who may be panicking and say, Be strong. Do not fear. God is making all things right. God will come to save you. We all know people, all of us, we know people who are suffering. We know people uh, who might be sick, in financial hardships, experiencing difficulties socially or with their families. The message of Isaiah to you or to them is, be strong, don't fear. God is making all things right. God will come to save you. He looks forward to a day when the desert will bloom with flowers and plants, and when cool springs will suddenly come out of the hot sand, when those who are blind will open their eyes to see a world of color surrounded by wildflowers, when those who are deaf will suddenly hear the soft bubbling of springs coming up out of the sand, or the roaring of rivers cutting their way through the desert, when those who cannot speak will suddenly sing with joy, in our gospel reading for today, we encounter another prophet. His name uh, is John the Baptist. We met him last week. And he's been sent to prison, and he wants to know, is Jesus really the Messiah, or should we keep looking? Now, he sends one of his disciples, or, or you could maybe call them his students, to ask that of Jesus himself. And Jesus' response might sound a little familiar to us. He says, Go report to John what you hear and see. Those who were blind are able to see, and those who were deaf now hear. And the poor have good news proclaimed to them. Jesus references our passage in Isaiah. In other words, the desert is beginning to bloom. Those things uh, which you heard would happen are beginning to happen. And John the Baptist uh, was the first sign of its coming. He was the prophet that God sent to prepare the way for Jesus. But we might be thinking, 2,000 years later, people are still blind, they're still injured, still deaf, still poor. What happened? This is the very purpose of Advent. Just as Isaiah was looking towards the birth of our Savior, so now we look to his return. He will come and make all things right, but now it remains to us to wait and to take the advice of the Apostle James from our epistle reading. Brothers and sisters, you must be patient as you wait for the coming of the Lord. He uses the example of a farmer who plants seeds uh, in the ground, but must wait a long time before he sees the crops which are to grow from them. Incidentally, we are right now in the last few weeks of the season when those seeds of those wildflowers in Joshua Tree are being germinated. After being germinated, it's going to be a number of months before the flowers will bloom, but the process has already begun. The same is with the Christian life. The first day came, but the final day is still coming. In the season of Advent, we are still waiting for Christmas, the day of that great mystery when Jesus came into the world. 
And as Christians, we wait for that day when Jesus will come again. We prepare ourselves. We give ourselves to the work of repentance and the exercise of the spiritual life. But today, we pause. And we rejoice. We remember that message of Isaiah that we said earlier. Be strong. Don't fear. God is making all things right. God will come to save you. Today we take on the same spirit as Mary, the mother of God, uh, who knowing that she will soon give birth to Jesus, sings. In fact, we, we said it earlier uh, in our psalm. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. For my spirit, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. Today, our candle is rose because the violet of Advent has been mixed with the white of the coming Christmas. Our spirits rejoice because our waiting is almost over. The desert is about to bloom. The Savior is about to be born. The Lord is about to return. And in the midst of the desert, in the darkness of our Advent waiting, we say, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Indeed, the Lord is near. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.